Welcome to Eddie's Football Waffle. Yeah. Guys, welcome back to the channel. Man United 3-1, getting the result on paper. 3-1, beating Brentford and getting the result on paper. Yes! Yes! That's what we're looking for, but really, what we're properly looking for is results and performances. But obviously, as a United fan, I'll take the result for now. But going into that game, you know, the performances for now just seem to be still on Ole mode. It's one half FC. The, the last game, Man United played one half really good and then the second half was poo. This game, first half was pooey and then second half, a little bit better. It seems like this, these guys, you know, they really need that conditioning to really go to the next level. Ralph, get in a fitness coach or whatever, man, and get these guys to really play a whole game. But like I said, 3-1. United will take it. Brentford, they, they did what I thought they would do, and that's come out and show that they, they've got some good team play. They pressed better than Man United. They got more chances in that first half from what I saw, more quality chances. They were more intense. Man United had to rely on De Gea again. Who's gonna be, he's gonna be player of the season. This guy is literally Superman. Superman with the super feet, keeping the balls out like he's playing in, in the courts <laughs> on the street. And there's no there's no surprise that De Gea is the, the top keeper right now with the most saves. 74 saves, the, the, the keeper that comes closest is Fabianski for West Ham with 70, Mesley with Meslier for Leeds with 69, Jose Sar with 68 for Wolves. These are mid-table teams. Well, West Ham are going for top four, but these are the lower teams that you would expect to have their keeper really doing a lot of work. But right now, Man United have got their, their keeper doing relegation saving settings, really doing a, too much work. And hopefully that changes soon because the keeper should not be man of the match for a top team, for what should be an elite team. Man United as well, more damning stats. I mean, it's, I think it's, it's 107 set pieces and counting that they can't score from. Broadcasting companies like BT Sport just keep bringing it up. And it's like, you've surely got to score for one of these. But Man United, you've got to call your set piece coaching. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he's getting the P45. Yeah! Or a little or a pay cut because come on man you have gotta be scoring from one of these set pieces and then looking at the other end to, to Man United's attack you know people like Ronaldo looking frustrated again I mean he does this thing where not he's not really getting service even though Tellers was trying a lot of crosses from that left it seems like there's got to be more cultured crossing into him because he wasn't really getting the service some some people were missing some of his runs but he would then get frustrated and come deep and try and get involved but it's not really working because when he came out of the upfront position people weren't really interchanging into his uh, upfront position to, to create an option. Ilanga did it a bit and then that, that's why he eventually got that goal, uh, a nice little assist from Fred who had um, from my point of view, a little bit of a quiet game. He was trying, maybe won a few duels, maybe could have won a few more duels in that midfield, but got the assist, got the assist for Elanga, and Elanga doing what he needs to do right now, you know. He, he, he's listening to Ralph. Ralph said he's a good student right now. He's listening and applying what is being taught. So it's good to see him get a goal, and it's good for his confidence, but really, I've still got to think about Sancho. Sancho, you know, I've called him out in my, in my last video, really, you're, you're talking about coming to Man United, bringing the goals and assists, bringing that, that top level stuff, you know, that you were doing in the Champions League at Dortmund. Come on, this has got to be a wake up call, you've got to be inspired now. Ilanga is in front of you, man. He's in front of you, my friend, so you've got to get going. But like I said, good for for Ilanga. When the team's winning, that's what's the most important. That's, that's That goes without saying looking towards people like Bruno who you know obviously is a focal point he, he was playing a bit more disciplined again Ralph's got Bruno dropping in trying to help the midfield trying to keep compact especially when Man U don't have the ball he was a little bit sloppy in possession but he was productive see this is the thing it says Bruno productive with the two assists 
but then you look you look at sometimes his, his treatment of the ball gives it away a bit too rashly when you could play the simple ball but hey he produced and got the assist so you, you've got you've got uh, the, the good performance overall i guess uh, on paper so yeah that we'll see if uh, bruno's going to fine tune his game a bit more the likes of McTominay in first half didn't really see enough but second half he was winning a lot of duels helping to turn over the ball and initiate the counter-attacks I think he helped initiate those two counter-attacks for the, the second two goals it was, it was good stuff from good stuff you know, when the subs did come Ralph did not wait too long for this for the proper subs this time getting Ronaldo not scared he, he, this is good from Ralph not showing fear to bring off uh, that the, the, the cocky legend which is Ronaldo wasn't having a, a great game pulled him off he was looking a little bit like uh, like the, like the kid that's misbehaving in school gets a timeout and Ralph was there had to chat to him on the sideline had to tell him why he pulled him off so Ronaldo's had to be maintained a little bit but hey you've got to let the manager go and do what he's doing because the result justifies uh, the subs uh, I think Rashford came on, got a goal, and it was justified. The likes of Matic and 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 uh, Maguire came on, helped to consolidate the defence a bit more, even though they conceded. I'm really I'm liking Varane and Lindelof because in the first half they were even playing a high line as well. They're able to have their recovery pace to to chase back when uh, Brentford were playing balls, trying to play the balls over the top. They, they, they're really good at clearing the ball with their head. They're, 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 they're good at firefighting, you know, get, just making the, the little tackles here and there. So really, it's good to see them starting again. Hopefully Maguire stays at the team because it means we can play a high line. And yes, Varane, Varane and Lindelof are the tag team now, okay? They're going to be like the Dudley boys. They're going to be taking on nonsense, getting the table, putting opponents through it. That's what they're going to be doing. Devon, nah, Varane. But now it's on. It's on to West Ham now, and the, the players of can, can really. I don't know, they've got to take uh, some confidence from the win. I don't know if they can really take that performance into the next game. They've got to start better now. They keep doing one half, like I said. Come on, somehow you guys have got to amalgamate these two halves into a full game. And West Ham are the contenders for fourth place now. These guys have to be beaten. Man United have to turn the theatre nightmares, because it is a home game. They've got to turn the theatre nightmares back into the theater dreams but we're going to see what happens thanks for tuning in that's just a, just a quick waffle from me hit the like subscribe if you do get your thoughts in the comments as to what you think will happen in the west ham game and your thoughts about this game and if you're you know if you're confident of this team turning it around and plowing through for that top four there's a lot of games to go we're going to see what man united is going to do all right peace